Hello there my quilty friends, Joy Quilting here. I'm going to try and show you today now how to hand quilt using um, the Aunt Becky. It's not quite a thimble but it works like a thimble. On, um, on the top I use a normal thimble, metal thimble, and underneath my work I use an Aunt Becky and you, it, it, you just hold it between your um, thumb and forefinger like that okay we're not putting it on top of our finger it's going it's going over i've got some quilting thread here and some quilting needles um, i can't use the very short ones my my fingers won't uh, won't grab them so i use um eights and nines i'm going to attempt to do this using a piece of plastic to begin with because i'm hoping you'll be able to see actually what i'm doing so I've got the thimble on. I'm left-handed, so if you're watching this, it's it's a mirror image. Um, it's on my my second finger, next to my index finger. I've uh, threaded my needle, and I got my aunt Becky, which I'm just gonna gonna hold over the edge of my finger. And basically, you put the needle in straight down to the work, straight down, and then as you flatten the needle. You push your Aunt Becky in and push it up against the side of that Aunt Becky till it pops out of your work. And then you immediately, as soon as it comes out of your work, pull that away, which releases tension. And then your needle will drop back down. Now, when you're uh, embroidering, you need the uh, fabric in the hoop tight like a drum. You don't do that when you're quilting. You want to have room to make the stitches. So you need to leave there be quite a little bit of... Um, bounce in the um, in your work and between around about six to eight inches from the top to the bottom of, of the of the movement in it so we'll begin now I've, I'm putting this Aunt Becky on and I'm going to put my hand underneath okay and I'm holding it you can you see the way I'm holding it and that see gives tension when it's along the top so I'm going to put my needle straight down into my work. I usually put it down and then pull it back up just a tad. Then I bring the Aunt Becky in towards my needle. As, as I'm doing that, creating tension, I'm dropping my needle onto its side. Okay, the needle will then hit the Aunt Becky, run up the hill and come out of the work. As soon as it comes out of your work, you move Aunt Becky away. So the tension is released. And once the tension is released, you lift the back of your needle up to push it down into your work as soon as you feel it pierce through you start the movement back up and you bring Aunt Becky in towards your needle and the needle rides up the hill to come out the top again as soon as it you see it coming out you fetch Aunt Becky back so you're releasing the tension move your needle back down put it into the work as soon as it's in through your work you bring in Aunt Becky back the needle then hits the Aunt Becky and push it up the hill and your uh, needle comes out again. Then I'm pushing with the side of the um, thimble to bring the work through. I'll just show you that quickly again now and then we move on to actual um, proper quilt. So you're going straight down with that first stitch, straight, straight down. Aunt Becky's away at the moment, not causing tension. And then once it's in, you can bring Aunt Betty to, uh, Becky towards you, flattening your needle as she comes. And then the needle will then get pushed up to the top of Aunt Becky. As soon as it comes out, release that tension by moving her away. Then you're lifting the back of your needle up to put it back down. As soon as it's in, you're dropping the needle back from the back towards the, the work and fetching Aunt Becky in. And the needle hits that and comes back up. Now we move on to some fabric. Okay, I've put some, um, some like calico Osnaberg, I think this is actually, um, with wadding in the back in, in my hoop. It's not tight. There's quite a bit of looseness there. There's about six to eight inches from the top to the bottom of that push. Okay, and you'll need that to be able to work the stitches in and out. You won't be able to see my bottom hand now, but I've still, obviously, I've still got Aunt Becky on, just holding her with my thumb, like that, and we're doing this movement back and forth. 
so <clears throat> I usually hold it up a little bit to put the first stitch in which is straight straight down I usually go straight down to get make sure I'm through and then I come back a little bit and then you push in Aunt Becky's here at the moment and I'm pushing her towards my needle and as I'm pushing Aunt Becky towards the needle I'm pushing the back of the needle down to lay it flat and then the needle automatically get pushed up to the top of the hill of the Aunt Becky and then you, you're pushing that needle up as soon as you see that appear take Aunt Becky back releasing the tension and you lift your needle up this way now and she goes down into the work as soon as that's through you come back in and let the needle come up to the top show you that again now so we're going to go straight down and once we're down and becky's over here bring her in bring her in and flatten the needle at the same time so it's running up that hill as soon as it's through take the tension away so it's got room to drop you couldn't do this if it was drum tight and then as soon as it's down through bring her back up depending on what you're doing you can get six or eight stitches on there now when you first start your stitches will be huge and they'll be uneven but you just need to work with getting the action right it's you know it's it's like learning to ride a bike isn't it you just don't get on it and go well most people don't um so it's a little technique to learn so that's using the aunt becky as you get towards the edge you'll find there isn't enough give to work to what once it starts to get tight you, you're too near the edge and you need to work your move a lot move your work along there we are hope that helps bye